Hi, in last episode, we learned about how to place structural columns in a project. This is episode 20 of Revit Beginner Program, and today we are going to learn about how to place structural beams. We are also going to talk about beam systems, what is it and how to work with it. So let's get started. I'm going to work in this project file where I already have created a few grid lines and a few structural columns. These structural columns are going from level 1 to level 2. Let's say I want to create structural beams that are connecting these columns at level 2. So I'm going into level 2 floor plan where I'm going to create my beams. Let's go to structure tab, beam. Let's see if we have any concrete beams available in our library. Currently they're not loaded. So I'll go into my load family and we'll choose structural framing folder. Let's go to concrete and load the concrete rectangular beam family. This family is already parametric which means I already have a few types. But if I want to customize any of these sizes, I can always go into edit type, duplicate, and make changes to the family type. Let's change the width to 230 and height to 450. Now I have a custom size of my structural beam and I'm ready to place it. Let's go here. I'm going to place a beam from the center of this column to the center of this column. Note that my placement plane is at level 2 by default because I'm placing this beam on level 2. Let's go to the 3D view and check. So I have a structural beam that is connecting this column to this column. If you notice here, there are two offset values available here. Both of them are at 0. This offset value is also available in the properties palette at start level offset and end level offset. Let me show you what it does. Let's say I'm going to make end level offset at minus 500. I'm going to be able to create a slanted beam using that. I can also change the elevation of the beam at minus 500 millimeters. So this start level offset and end level offset actually defines its elevation from the level that you have placed it. I'm going to make it zero. And I'm going into visibility graphics I'm going into analytical model and I'm going to switch all of these categories on. Here you can see that my beam's analytical line is at the top of my structural beam. Let's say I'm going to change the start level offset and minus 500 in both directions. You will see that analytical line is also brought down to minus 500 millimeters. Now there's another way of bringing the structural beam down at minus 500. Let's put everything back to zero and zero. Now there's another property called Z offset value. The, right now the justification of our beam is at the top, which means if I cut a section here, you will see the top of the beam is aligned to level two. Now if I change the Z justification to bottom, the bottom of my beam is going to be aligned to level 2, 0 offset. Which means my beam's bottom is going to match with my analytical line here. Now let's say if I change the Z justification to top, but I change the Z offset value to minus 500. The beam is down, but my analytical line is not. So depending on how you would like to create your analytical model, you can choose either of these methods. I'm going to make it zero for now. Let's go to structure tab and use beam tool. And this time I'm going to use on grids option. I've already chosen the type of beam that I would like to place. And now I'm going to choose all the grid lines on which I would like to place it. Here you can notice that even though I have selected these grid lines, the beams are not placed there because there is no structural columns available at this point. Let's go to finish. My beams are placed here. Let's go to level one and try that again. I'm going to go into structure, beam, choose the type of beam that I would like to place, choose on grids option, and choose the grids on which I would like to place my beams. Finish. Here I've got a warning. It says none of these created elements are visible in floor plan level one view. This is because of my view range. Let's go to the 
view range of my floor plan level 1. The cutting plane is 1200 millimeters above level 0 and the depth of the view is up till 0. Now because we have set the justification of our beams at the top, the beams have gone under the level. Let's go back to the section and have a look. So these beams are under the level. So I'm not able to see it because the depth of my view is only up to zero. Let's go back and change it. Let's go to view range and change our view depth to maybe minus 1000. Now you're able to see your beams. Let's go to 3D view to check. Let's go back to level two. Now using the beam tool, I was able to create my primary beams, either manually or on grids. However, let's say I want to create a system of secondary beams in this particular room. To do this, we can use a tool called Beam System. Now we have Automatic Beam System and a Sketch Beam System. Let's try Automatic Beam System first. When you go near a primary beam and that space is surrounded by all the primary beams, Automatic Beam System is going to be able to detect that and are able to place an Automatic Beam System there. The beams in this beam system are placed at 1828 millimeters fixed distance from each other. The justification is center and the type of the beam is chosen as 230 by 450. Let's go to 3D view here to check. But let's say I want to change the position of these beams. I can come back to my beam system. Let's say I want to make everything at equal distance and I want to have five lines of beams in between. I could also change the type of beam from concrete to steel or any other type that you have in your project. When you go near a beam and if you're not able to select the beam system, just press tab. And this is the beam system that we have selected. You can always come back, change the layout rules or the justification of the type of beam that it's using. You can also individually choose any particular beam and change its type later on. Let's change everything back to 230 by 450 and change the layout rule to fix number five. Let's say I want to create a beam system on the other direction as well. Instead of creating a new beam system, I could copy this, control C, go to modify and align to the same place. I've created a duplicated copy of this beam system, but I'm going to edit the boundary and change its beam direction from the vertical to the horizontal. Let's finish that. Now I have beam system that is in the another direction. I can always come back to it, change the values or the beam type of this particular beam system. So this is automatic beam system. But let's say I want to create a similar pergola system in this space, which is not enclosed by the primary beams. For this, I can come back to my structure, beam system and use sketch beam system. The automatic beam system is not going to be able to detect here because it's not enclosed. Let's go to sketch beam system and choose our boundary lines. Let's go to pick supports because we already have a support here and here. And maybe we may change this boundary to an arc. It must be an enclosed boundary. The beam direction tool allows you to set the direction of your beam. For now, I'm going to keep it the way it is. Let's finish this. Let's change the layout rule to fix number maybe up to three. Now you can see here that it's only going to create secondary beams, not the primary beams. Now this circular primary beam that you see here needs to be created manual if you would like to have it. So let's go into beam and choose arc option and create our primary beam there. The interesting thing about beam system is that whether it is created automatic or sketch, you can always come back to it and edit the boundary as per your need. Let's say I want to create a void in the middle of this beam system. I'm going to choose my rectangle and create a loop inside a loop. A closed boundary inside a closed boundary is going to create a void here. It's going to finish it. Let's do the same for the beam system of the other side. I'm going to create the same size of void. 
it's going to adjust the beam system to incorporate that particular void. If you would like to try your hands on an exercise of creating structural beams in your project, you may try my website learningrevitonline.com. I've provided the link to this website in the description box. This tutorial is completely free and you can download the materials required for completing this tutorial here. This tutorial not only introduces you step by step to creating structural beams in your project, but also to a variety of other tools. So you can follow the tutorial step by step to learn each of this topic in order to create a structural beam in your project. I hope you enjoyed today's session. If you have, please press the like button. If you have any comments, suggestions or feedback, please feel free to comment below. Please subscribe, stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next episode.